Did I dye my hair to look like Danny Phantom? Yes. Do I regret dyeing my hair to look like Danny Phantom? Not yet. I might, but as of right now, I think I kind of like it. Hey guys, Supreme Market Nights here, and I am finally back with a brand new Supreme Answers, the series where you guys ask me questions and I give you answers. Except this time it's gonna be a little bit different because going through the questions that you guys asked me this time around, a lot of them were the same exact ones and I realized I get the same questions over and over and over, especially right now in my life. So instead of going through and picking like 30 questions to answer, I'm gonna go through and answer very thoroughly and honestly the 10 most asked questions that I always get. These are the most asked questions that I get. I get them all the time. Some of them are very recent related, so they're questions that I've been getting a lot lately, not even when I'm asking for Q and A's, I'll like post something on Instagram and people will be like, bah, 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 and ask this question and I'll be like, why are they even asking that right now? And then other ones have been, since the freaking dawn of this channel, I've been getting questions. So we're gonna go through them. These are the 10 most asked questions. The first one being, do you watch RuPaul's Drag Race? Just kidding, I do get that one a lot, but we're not gonna answer it. Like I said, a lot of them are very personal. In fact, they're questions I usually avoid, but it's 2019, baby, I don't care. My hair is silver now. So am I really gonna worry about answering questions online? I put everything else out there, so let's just go through it. I wouldn't say anything I regret in a video, and I say so much on stream now. You guys are very open to seeing how I am in real life because of that real-time live stream. And so, you know what? Let's just go through it. I'm done, I'm done avoiding questions. I'm done not answering certain ones. Thank you guys for the questions. We're gonna get back to normal Supreme Answers in other videos, hopefully very soon. So without further ado, let's get into your questions. Okay, so the first question I'm gonna answer is one that you guys probably clicked on this video to know about. It's something that you guys are constantly asking me about. Most of you respect my privacy, but a lot of you just kind of want to know or didn't know. And so in stream, when it's talked about, people freak out. Yes, me and Julian did break up. We are no longer together. And that was in December. We broke up around like end of November, early December. And then we posted about it in middle of December. So if you didn't see those posts, like, I'm sorry, but like you, if you want to know personal things about me, you should follow me on my personal accounts, my Twitter and my Instagram. Both of those got the post. Everybody that follows me on those saw it, but it wasn't something that I felt, first of all, obligated to post a video about. Second of all, right posting a video about because it's like, I don't know, it was December. It's like peak time for ads. And it's just kind of like, that is a personal thing. And for me to post about it on a Pokemon channel in the middle of December. I don't know. It just felt in bad taste, out of place. Not the type of person that I am when it comes online and not the type of person Julian is either. So we decided we would make those posts and that was it. We wouldn't make any videos about it. That being said, I do feel comfortable enough now that enough time has passed to address it so that for those of you that don't follow me anywhere else, you can know that this is a thing. We did break up. We are still friends and like life goes on guys. It just kind of happens. Is there a reason that we broke up? There's always going to be a reason. There's always going to be things that lead to a breakup. But that being said, nobody did anything wrong. Could I still be friends with him if he did something wrong to me? Probably not. Would he still be my friend if I did something wrong to him? Probably not. So for those of you that have those speculations and because I don't talk about it, you have all of these ideas running through your mind, rest easy. Nothing did happen, but yes, we are broken up and that's how it is. All of that aside, how am I doing personally? I'm doing really good right now. I'm exercising a lot. I'm eating a lot better than I used to. I clearly don't have as bad of anxiety anymore because I dyed my freaking hair. I don't think I could have ever done that like a couple months ago. I was in a place where I couldn't even take my hat off, you guys remember. And so now to think that on the whim to look like Danny Phantom, I decided, you know what? Let's just go freaking dye your hair. Um, it feels pretty good. I feel very happy with my life and I'm, I'm good to go. So if you guys are worried about me, I'm doing really good. So thank you guys for worrying, but know that you don't have to. And also I get a lot of people worrying about my sleep schedule and it's like, yeah, that's not gonna change. Everything else is good. My sleep schedule, no, it's bad, but like, I want it to be like, I like staying up at night. I just, I can't help it. So that's how it is. Now stemming right along from that one, I get this question all the time, especially right now, because most people do know that we broke up and that is, are you still single? Are you single? And the answer to that is yes. I realized I have been in a relationship with somebody for the last 10 years. I haven't been single for the last 10 years. I am only 23. That means since I was 13 years old, I have been dating somebody. For eight years, I dated a girl named Jennifer, we're now best friends, and then pretty much immediately after that, I jumped into the relationship with Julian, and we dated for almost three years. So for the longest time, I was not alone. And so for the first time ever, it feels like I am actually a single person. And though I don't really feel like dating right now, I want to stay single. Like, it feels good to know that I am 
just myself. And so I'm gonna stick with that for a while. That being said, if the perfect person comes along, I'm not just gonna be like, well, I'm actually doing the single thing right now, so sorry, <laughs> hands are tied. Like, I'm not gonna do that, but um, I'm not gonna actively search for anybody either because I'm gonna, I, I just kind of like the idea of working on myself and bettering myself and being happy with who I am and not having to, like feel validated in somebody else, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I feel. I'm very happy being single, so I'm gonna stay that way. That being said, I did download Tinder for like 3.5 seconds, then I deleted it, cause that wasn't fun. Hated that. I am 100% single and it's gonna stay that way for a while. Question number three is uh, one that I am annoyed by kind of, but I don't blame you. And that is why is my content so sporadic and so inconsistent and it's true, it really is. I do have an answer for this, but it doesn't really mean it's going to change. So many people, when they have a YouTube channel that does well and they earn money from, they look at it from like a business perspective and I've never been one to do that, probably because I've been doing it for so long without that and I've always done what I wanted to. So when I wanted to do top tens, I would make top tens and I get very fixated on one thing at a time. Like right now, I've been streaming a lot and I've been shiny hunting so much because that's what I really feel like doing right now. It's something new, it's something exciting and that's just kind of how my brain works. I get stuck on one thing at a time and it's hard for me to like do many things like TCG. I did TCG videos for a really long time where I was opening cards. Um, I haven't done one for over a year now and a lot of people are asking where those videos are, why I don't do more top tens and the answer is very simple and it's always been because I make the content that I feel like making. Even with shiny Pokemon, I made a freaking list in 2018 of 50 shinies I wanted to hunt and then I barely hunted any of them. Most of those I feel like I'm gonna hunt this year, which I'm really excited about, but I wasn't hunting in 2018 because I just didn't feel like it. It's always been basically wrapped around the idea of do what makes you happy. That doesn't mean I'll never do it again. That's the thing. If I all of a sudden see a set in the TCG that I really wanna open, I'll make TCG videos again. And if I think of a really good idea when it comes to countdowns or videos like the 10 Amazing Shiny Hunts, when I get an inspiration to do those, I will do them. I'm not gonna just not do them but I never forced myself to make content and sure, maybe that gets me in trouble, but um, it's also gotten me to the point where I am today and I'm happy about that. So why don't you do Let's Plays on this channel? I have never been a person that liked people watching me play through a game. Like my twin brother, when we used to play like Tony Hawk and stuff, we'd watch each other. That was the extent. I don't really like people watching my progression through a game. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I suck at video games. I kind of do. Not competitive ones. I can be good at a competitive game, but ones that are story-based, I have a really hard time knowing where to go. And maybe that's the reason. I just, you know, I never watched Let's Plays. I never enjoyed them myself. And so to think that I would make something that I wouldn't watch myself is kind of dumb, right? So yeah, I've never been the type to want to do a Let's Play. That being said, there are games that I haven't played yet and I want to explore. Mystery Dungeon Games, Pokemon Snap, Poke Park Wii, those are games I do want to play and I think it would be fun to play it alongside you guys, but I, not in a let's play format, in like a stream where maybe I'll do like a highlights video and we can go through like the funny moments of it and stuff. But do I ever see myself having a series on the channel? Like let's play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon episode 63, the dungeon of Miss, I don't know, I'm I, the dungeon of mystery. But you know what I'm saying? Like I don't really see myself doing a series that way. So. This I get so often, so many people do wanna see me do Let's Plays, and like I said, there's gonna be a variation of it when it comes to streaming at some points, but never will I have like a consistent series where I'm playing through a game. Another part of that is, again, I do get stuck on certain things, and I'm scared if I start doing Let's Plays, you'll only be seeing Let's Plays, and that is not what I wanna do in the slightest. This one, I feel like I get more than I actually do, but every time it's asked, I see it, and so I really feel like it's frequently asked, and that is, do you have a job outside of YouTube? And a lot of people are probably just asking questions like this because they wanna know if YouTube is feasible for them because my channel really, it's big comparatively to other ones, but then, you know, it's all about scaling. Like there are so many channels that are way huger than mine. So to think that I wouldn't need another job is probably really exciting for people who wanna do YouTube. That being said, I don't have another job. YouTube is just my job, YouTube and streaming. If I needed to get another job, I'm very open to that idea. But as of right now, I don't I don't need to. Is this question rude? Cause like when I look at it, I feel like it's very rude reading it, but I think I just take it that way. I don't think it's meant to be rude, but I just see it as like, are you making money on your videos? Or like, if you're making money, why aren't you more consistent? And all these things, it's just like, don't worry about how much money I'm making. 
worry about yourself and where you're going and maybe you are so that's why I'm answering it now but as of right now I'm very lucky to say that yeah all I do is hunt shiny Pokemon and talk about it and then really quick, the follow-up question that has to do a lot with that is, am I still in school? Because so many people know that I live in Orlando, and so they assume that I go to UCF, which I did, but um, no, I'm not still in school. I got my AA, and then I did a year and a half in the program that I was in. I was in radio television and minoring in cinema studies, which was film, and uh, I didn't love it. I really didn't, and that's the honest truth. And you know what, I decided to stop. That being said, I don't wanna be responsible or the sole reason that some of you quit school when you probably should stay. Everybody's situation is different and everybody's life is different. So I want people to make decisions based on what they think for themselves, not based on what somebody you're watching is doing. So that's why I avoid a question like this, but to give you the answer, no, I'm not still in school. And yes, I did hate it very much. It wasn't fun. I literally have a notepad where I was taking notes in my final semester and like you see, at the beginning of the page I'm starting the notes where I'm like taking actual notes and then all of a sudden it says like I'm gonna quit school I'm gonna play Pokemon for a living all that like it's ridiculous I was in tears I hated school I really did that being said I did really good in high school top 10% I could have finished school I just chose not to okay so the next two are very much like the first couple questions they're very personal and they're questions that I definitely usually avoid just because um, there, it's not really something I feel obligated to answer, but I'm gonna include it in this video because I do get it asked all the time on Twitter, on Instagram, in DMs for these Q and A's. It's something that you guys seem to really be interested in, and so I'm gonna answer it. Do I consider myself bisexual, straight up gay? Would I ever date a girl again? Like I said before, I dated a girl for eight years. I was in a relationship with a girl for a very long time. And so a lot of people are very confused, which I find funny because the fact that it even matters is dumb. I have always been one to say I hate labels and that is not just a front so I can avoid these questions. It's the truth. I don't like to box myself in. I don't like to categorize myself or close the lid. I never know who I'm going to meet or experiences that I'm going to have in the future or like what I'm going to want in three years from now. So it's very hard for me to label myself as one thing or another when um, I don't, I don't know. Do I see myself dating a girl again? No, not really. I, I, whenever I think of myself in a relationship, it's, it's with a guy. In the future, I see myself dating a man. That's just how it is, baby. But that being said, I'm very open to the idea that there could be someone that comes into my life that changes that. And I know there are labels and so many people are gonna try and label me in the comments, but just know I don't want to be labeled. And I know some people feel like it's easier to have a label to go with, or maybe you feel more welcomed and more at home when you find that perfect label. But for me, I'd rather it be an ambiguous thing. I don't, I don't care enough. I am happy with how I am, who I am and where I'm going. So do I need to have a label to describe who I'm interested in? No, I, I really don't. Most of my relationships from here on out will be with guys. I'm pretty positive of that, but I'm not gonna box myself in. That's the answer you're looking for, probably not, but that's the one you're getting because that's the truth. And then I got a freaking follow-up one all the time where people ask, will you ever date a fan? And I don't know why I get this question so much, but just this question in itself, if I'm looking at the wording, the answer is gonna be no. But again, I'm not gonna close myself off. Just because somebody found me through YouTube doesn't mean that they aren't right for me. But I don't like the idea of like, would you date a fan? Because I already hate the word fan. I don't like using it when it comes to my viewers and things like that. I just consider everybody a person. So would I date a fan? With that wording, it feels weird to say yes, but I'm open to whatever. But again, I'm single and I'm happy about it. Question number nine, what happened to the milk bath? Why won't I do the milk bath that I promised everybody for 100,000 subscribers? I have two very good answers for it. I have answered this before, but I still get this question all the time, even on Twitter. I'll post a tweet and somebody will reply to it saying, oh, thanks for that milk bath you promised, or wow, thanks for lying to your viewers. Like, it's crazy. A freaking milk bath, do you want it that bad, really? First of all, I'm just gonna say this, it got really weird. When I said I was gonna do this milk bath and it became like a meme, it was fun and everything, like everybody was like, oh, the milk bath. But then like, it got gross. There was a good handful of people that like over sexualized it and so I hated that. And it gave it this stigma where I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. That's not something I wanna do. And like I said before, I don't make videos that I don't wanna make. So yeah, I did say I would do it for 100,000 subscribers and then I didn't wanna make it anymore. Now, I gotta tell you guys this. This is the freaking juicy. I can't even believe that this happened. 
If you watch my streams, you probably know it now, but oh my gosh, guys. For a while, I was getting really bad eczema on the back of my scalp and under my arms, and I didn't know what it was from. I like stopped using deodorant. I stopped all these things to try and see what was causing it. Oh my gosh, my sister's boyfriend on our family trip told me that he was lactose intolerant, and so I looked up lactose intolerance, and one of the like symptoms of lactose intolerance was Oh my God, it was like irritated skin, underarms and eczema and stuff. And you guys know how big of a deal milk was for me. I would drink it like after I exercised. And even in videos, I would have a glass of milk and drink it like it was a thing that everybody knew I loved milk. And so looking this up and discovering lactose intolerance was causing it, I stopped drinking milk just to try and see. And oh my God, I like it cleared up. I used, I can use deodorant again. Like my skin stopped freaking out. It's not like something that the doctor told me that I'm lactose intolerant. In fact, I probably should get a second opinion, but I'm pretty positive now that I am lactose intolerant. And it's something that I would like pray about. Like I, I never wanted this in a million years, but you guys, I'm pretty positive I'm lactose intolerant. And so should I do a milk bath? No, I really don't think I should for health reasons. So for nothing else, I can't get in a bath of milk because it'll, it'll ruin me. Okay guys, and last but not least, question number 10, saving the best for last, that is top or bottom. Now this is very much a gay culture thing and I'm sure that most of the people that ask it nowadays are just memeing me, like they're just doing it to be funny and stupid, but this question pops up so often in my Q and A's that it's like causing me to not see other questions. If I'm answering honestly, I hate this question. I get that for some reason, when you find out someone's gay, the automatic question is this. Like people just wanna know it. People wanna know, well, what is he? But like, relax, it, it has nothing to do with you. I am not a shy person in my day to day, but this is something that I don't feel like I need to share online. And so I'm not going to. And with that being said, that is gonna do it for this edition of Supreme Answers. I know it was a lot different than normal, but it was something that I was kind of excited to do. And it felt cool to be open and honest about very serious things that you guys always ask about. And so I hope now you guys can go back on this video when you wanna see an answer to questions that are very personal. Check this video first. I really hope that you guys check this one because odds are I just answered it. Are there more personal questions that I get asked and will I get asked personal questions again in the future? Of course. This was my chance to actually address it in a way that I felt I had a very good control about it. And this felt very much what I wanted to do as my first Q and A of 2019. So once again, and thank you guys so much for all the support. All of the people that come to my streams and everything, thank you guys so freaking much. It is so fun to shiny home with you guys, you don't even know. I really will try very hard to start posting other videos alongside the shiny videos and the streams, but just know that uh, it's something that I'm working on. It's not something that I'm perfect with and I'm okay with that and I hope you guys are too. But thank you guys so much for watching. More videos are coming very soon, but until next time, this is Supreme Arcanines signing out. A lot of you want me to say shining out. I accidentally did it in my last video. Supreme Arcanine shining out. I know it like makes sense, but also like makes no sense at all. So we're gonna keep it signing out. So that's what I'm doing, I'm signing out. See you later guys. <laughs>